Greetings. This is uh, from Yesterday's Stash. That's my Etsy store. And my name is Emily. And I'm here to talk to you or show you my latest journal that I have upload that I will be uploading onto my Etsy store. I'm actually new to the Etsy and YouTube channel community. I have been junk journaling uh, for about five years and most of what I have uh, put together I've used as you know for gift giving. So today is just an example of how I have embarked on this whole junk journaling journey. Um, it's a very exciting. Uh, I am happy to have discovered it and to be able to uh, use my uh, stash. And the word yesterday stash comes from the fact that uh, about 30 years ago, um, we uh, were uh, taking the old home place and, and selling it and we had to clean out everything and uh, spinsters and teachers had been living at the old home place in the latter years and they were all sorts of drawers full of fabric and all sorts of uh, needlework and um, laces and doilies and uh, you know tablecloths um, and all sorts of, uh, of napkins and such as well as needleworking supplies and so I brought some home not knowing really what I was going to do with it and over the years I've asked myself what am I going to do with it and I've, I've actually you know tried doing a variety of things with it but nothing has worked like this junk journaling so I'm really excited to be a part of this community and to be able to uh, bring you um, ideas and suggestions for ways to make our stash work for us. Most of what I will be using is going to be recycled materials. Um, I have a store here in, um, in addition to my collection from the old home place, there's a, a scrap exchange and it's everybody takes their scraps and donates them and then they are resold and the money is used for various, um, for various charities but reuse is the big word here. So in addition to my collection, I've also found things there at lesser expensive prices. So I have really got some bargains in, um, have ha really found some good bargains over the years. One of the things that I did find was, you know how you go and take, uh, you've seen these before and people pick out their fabrics, swatches and things. and. The one thing that I, I found one of these had leather or pleather or naga hide or whatever. So I, I took and made it the, the, the side of this. This actually is an Asian folder, um, is what I uh, used for an Asian, it's, it's a set of, it's a, it's a file folder that has this Asian pattern in it. And so I accented it with both um, the peach, using the peach color and also uh, brown. So uh, the journal is actually um, 50 pages. It is, um, so front and back, 100 pages. 32 of them are actually journaling pages. And if you actually take um, the 40, I put 40 tags in here, and if you take the 40 tags out, it makes a pretty nice book for, for writing in and keeping as a journal. So. Uh, I also have this collection of uh, old magazines and some really nice old pictures and I just couldn't resist using these pictures. So you can see that in the front and the back of the journal I have put pictures and this one is called At the Fountain. And I've gotten into the practice of taking the journals that I've put together, of which I have some 20 put together now. Um, and I use still you know, using my stash, um, and um, I try to name them name them from something that's either in the book, a page in the book, or, or so I'm calling this this journal at the fountain since that's this picture right here. Uh, the spine is about two inches. On the front, I have several different layers of lace, and. Um, keys, uh, some Prima flowers, and this right here is an old card that I found, uh, or an old postcard, or an old, just an old greeting card. And so what I did was I Mod Podged it, and then I also put this, uh, I don't know if you use, uh, it's a Liquitex 
product, it's a varnish, and you use it to protect the outside of your uh, things, particularly things that you want to make sure are preserved, don't get scratched, and, and so forth. I've done an interesting study on Sari Silk, S-A-R-I. One of the things I have found out is that the women in India go to the uh, where they make saris, S-A-R-I, or S-A-R-E-E. -E. In the Indian culture, the women wear, wear saris, especially at their weddings. You'll see pictures of that. And they, they, they go to the mill where the saris are made, and they pick up the leftover fabric, and they tear it, and they actually make, uh, make a long strand from it. And they some uh, join it together wherever there's, you know, a tear. They dye it. And it makes a great cottage industry for the women in um, in India to, to uh, have an extra form of income. So this particularly particular uh, bolt or whatever scheme of sari silk came from directly from India. And what they say is sari silk ribbon, ribbons consist of thin strips of mainly silk materials stitched and knotted together in one length. So they kind of have an explanation here. So it, I kind of am excited about the fact that in addition to the my, my scraps, uh, my drawers of, of fabric and yarn, that I also am using the um, recycled sari in this particular book. So uh, the book has four um, signatures. And um, uh, I have used quite a few different um, products. For instance, this right here, this, this right here, this particular pocket right here is a piece of upholstered fabric that I got, you know, like something like this. And I cut it up and I uh, um, made a pocket out of it. Uh, and this particular uh, book uh, mark here is Bargello from an old Bargello book. And then I have a little explanation of what Bargello is. Uh, so many books, so little time. I'm kind of a book person. I'm also a Jane Austen fan, and I love the, the books that she, that she wrote. Here's an example of, uh, uh, I've got lots of this, it's old neckties that have been sewn together, and this was one of the things that was in one of the drawers of the old home place, and then they embroidered on top of it. And I have just like 25 squares. This was intended to be a quilt. But if you put something like this together uh, and made a quilt out of it, it would just be way too busy for my tastes. So I have been using these remnants of uh, little um, hand sewn. I've actually even kept the, the back open. You can actually put a piece of cardboard over it and make it into a, a tag or something. But I wanted everyone, I wanted, to, I wanted to show how neat the sewing, the, the intricacy of the work that was done to make this. So uh, I just sewed a piece of hem tape around it to give it some quality. I also have a collection of old books and magazines that uh, were this particular one is the poems of John Greenleaf Whittier and it was published in 1900. So I like to include book pages in my journals of some of, uh, of some of the books that I have. Some came from the old home place, some have been given to me, but these are the poems of John Greenleaf Whittier and you can take this and use it for tags or tuck spots or the back of um, the back of uh, backing uh, for, for something. Um, uh, this particular one doesn't have any pictures in it. I also like to include pictures um, in some of them, and I may have pictures somewhere in the book. I also used um, this is Deli Girl, uh, a and uh, she's a Spotify sales, and I just love this. It's a Jane Austen um, journaling pages, and 
um, I just had to put them in, in here. So this is part of what uh, what's included here. This is what we call uh, Cambridge paper, and Cambridge paper is sort of like uh, paper that was was used for bookkeeping in time gone by. And Scrap Exchange has a huge, huge collection of various kinds of paper. And I coffee or tea, day, tea dyed them and made them into uh, little short pages for journaling. Um, this is the back side of that envelope. Uh, here is another uh, big tag that came from uh, one of, uh, when you go to the scrap exchange, you can buy just pages or you can buy books or you can buy, you know, of scrapbooking supplies, scrapbooking ephemera, uh, sticky stickers, uh, ink, uh, pens, uh, glues, everything that you can think of. And so if I see a piece of paper that I like, I just buy the sheet. They sell it by the ounce. Um, so some of this book is, some of the book is going to have some English, uh, some things from England because I have such a collection of items from London and from England that um, I want to, uh, to, to uh, share and a junk journal is a great way to do that. Um, more tags here with a belly band. And here's an example of where I took um, a small book, a small old book of which I'll show that, that book to you here in a minute and added some flowers and some lace and trim and you name it. This is actual stickles right here and just made a pocket, a page, and then um, a, a pocket for uh, um, putting items in. This particular, these particular cards are where over the years I have collected pictures of castles in England. I've been to a couple, but I haven't been to nearly enough. This particular one is Sudley. Um, we've probably heard of that. It's in Cotswold. And this was where once the home of Catherine Parr, who was King Henry VIII's last husband. It wasn't Catherine Parr, but um, uh, she was, uh, anyway, different people. Anyway, the Sudley has, has history. King Henry VIII went, you know, actually went went to Sudley Castle. And this particular one is Appleby and it's in Westmoreland. And it was built, castle built somewhere around 1700. Not all of these castles, you know, are still places where people live. They're just structures. Uh, some of them that are open to the public as, uh, you know, for entertaining and museums and things of that nature. It's just very interesting to to read about them so this is just a little I'm not sure who started this but it's really a neat thing and this what I use is um, dictionary pages from my great aunt's estate that she had uh, she had two volumes of this century dictionary and she actually has her name in it she's got the date of 1938 but the book was actually, the dictionary was actually published in 1927. So the, since the pages are so thin, I, I usually have to uh, glue them or sew them together to use them. But old dictionary pages are, are um, wonderful to use uh, in junk journals. This paper here is from uh, Tim Holt's Wallflower Collection. And I've just included some um, some tags, some flower tags, um, more of the Cambridge paper, postcards, or something that I have also had a co uh, you know collected and have a great you know a pretty nice collection of. This is called the Gem Picture, and it was James Henderson and Sons Limited, the flowers and gardens of Madaria. But at the Scrap Exchange. I have been able to find, um, let's see if I can get to it, where people have traveled to different countries, and for 50 cents, I get this long strip of, this is particularly Bath, England, of where Jane Austen lived, and so it has the information about the Roman baths, um, the Roman baths and the abbey. Uh, that is in Bath. It is just so 
I mean, just a, a picture, uh, postcards are just such great things to learn from. I have quite a collection of those, not just from England, but other places as well. Um, this is another one of those taking two uh, old book pages and gluing them together or sewing them together and putting, making them into a pocket by putting some adornment or embellishment on it. This particular paper right here is tissue paper that I ordered from Zazzle that I have made into, into flowers. I could make flowers all day. I love, I could spend a whole year making flowers. So this is something about, um, so about Jane Austen in, in here. Wherever there's pages that only one side has got, um, is printed, it's not two-sided, then I've tried to come in and, and do a little bit of uh, stenciling or painting uh, or something to provide a little bit of um, embellishment to it. I, uh, this is a picture of a boat and there's a quote here from um, North Hanger Abbey. This uh, picture kind of goes together. It's one big picture that I put in here and then stuck this. This actually has cardboard on the back of it. Um, I have also over the years I've collected um, seashells and so I've been taking taking seashells and putting them on tags to make them into uh, you know into tags or, or to decorate the tag. Um, it's been a lot of fun to to learn how to take you know different things and put them together to uh, make something different. Here's one of those that I did some um, all of the other pages are coffee or tea dye uh, stained. This is actually a an envelope that has a little book in it. I love to put a little just pick up and go book where I need notes to write down and this is where I can find it in my journal. And this is an actual tea bag that I glued on and it has a, a little tag in it and I just did a little tiny bit of um, collaging on there. Jane Austen was a huge reader. She loved to read uh, and so I, I have a uh, like to collect and make tags that have books in them. This is uh, Harper's Weekly from September of 1862 and it has an article, articles in it, uh, of what uh, General Buell's army talking of self, the tragedy of the something. It's just a lot of interesting reading here and some pictures. I always include a four-leaf clover in every book. Uh, for good luck, I collect four-leaf clovers as well. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with, um, this is where I did some stenciling or something on top of that. This is an example, something I found at a cupcake store or a cake store was had a gift section. And the, what they do, it's, it's by a company called Compendium uh, and they sell these pop-up cards and they each have a different message inside. So this is Carpe Diem, that's the one that this one is. This is actually called, you know, Happy Day and it's a pop-up card that has uh, a positivity kind of a inspirational statement or saying in it. Tried to include little um, charms and trinkets where I could. Uh, this is a picture of, let's see, Princess Victoria of Wales at Frogmore in 1889. Um, photographed by the princess, Prince of Wales, of Wales. So this is part of a collection from the National Gallery of Art. And uh, w when I went into Scrap Exchange one day, they had this stack of uh, cards that were about this size. And uh, they all had black and white pictures of different uh, artists or persons of uh, note or celebrities or whatever. And so I've taken them and either covered them on the back or done something to them to preserve them and uh, use, we can use, you can use them as tags or um, 
you can take out take the, any of this out and reuse it for other other purposes. Um, then this is actually a, a picture from the Regency Day um, and kind of the Romanish Roman look costume wise. This is other costumes from that period. Uh, well, some of I mean. There was the Edwardian period, the Regency period, the Victorian period, the Georgian period. All of them, there was a slight variation in their, in their wardrobe, but it's interesting to study the different variations. This is a set of old one-cent postcards that can be used to embellish um, and make a tag out of. Um, these are just some tags that have uh, some coloration on the back. Uh, Scrap Exchange also has a huge collection of these ATC cards, and they don't, the, the ATC cards, they're not always, they, they're sometimes you, they have a better collection than others. This one is from Tennessee. It's, and I can't tell you what, it's Jetem, and it tells who made it, when she made it, and um, she called this Je, and I guess Tem is spelled down there. What an interesting collection of ATC cards, and I try to shell that, sell, include them in all of uh, all of my journals. But it's just exquisite the way this person put it together. Here's another. Uh, most of these books, these old magazines that I have, this is well, like I say, they're not in very good shape. But uh, this one is from 1893. It's called the Century Magazine. But somewhere in all of these magazines are ads. And so I've cut the ads out and put them and made them into tags on the back. And um, sometimes the there's in time gone by, the advertiser would put a border around it. And, and other times they wouldn't. And one time I was in, I had a really interesting experience. I was in an old um, publishers, I don't, uh, publishing uh, bookstore, and they had, she had these wonderful, what she called border tapes, and uh, this is what was used in time gone by uh, for putting the, uh, and you can see here, this is the border, I can't seem to open this, um, and they would actually put the border around the edge of the advertisement. And then, of course, we went into the digital age and that was not needed anymore. But there actually are some, um, you know, some of the ads that do come with a border around them and then some don't. So I added the border just to give it some character. And it just, uh, was a very usable way, a very useful way to use that product to, to reuse. Uh, this is just a little tag here. We have several libraries in the area, university libraries, and I have quite a collection of, um, of library cards when they went to, to the, the, they got rid of the, the paper card catalog and now they just go to the digital. Um, so these are actually authentic uh, card catalogs that came out of uh, the, libraries, the library uh, collection. So this is another example of a um, Library of Congress, uh, uh, what a, uh, National Gallery of Art cards, and I just put a backing on it so it can be used as a tag. It has some coffee or tea staining on it. Uh, some more of these uh, library cards that a lot of people I've seen embellish them, actually put little um, uh, collages on them. I also love art. Uh, it, this particular one is by um, A. Mauve, and it is called Spring, and it's just a nice pastoral picture that I've turned into a tag. And here's some more Tim Holtz tags. 
at the back of each book I try to put some sort of or put items that I couldn't fit into the book that I would have liked to so but I don't want the book to be too thick so included in the package uh, of all of my journals is is going to be some extra extra things that I would have wished that I could have fit in here and this is the back it's called behave yourself it's a woman talking to her dog I thought that was cute so this is at the fountain this book will be for sale in my Etsy shop uh, I am pleased to uh, be a part of the Etsy community and to be able to join other junk journalers on their journey. And I appreciate her taking the time to view this with me.